During a press conference, Cuba and Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez rejected the new course of measures imposed by the United States and the disinformation campaigns issued by some international media. There has been no act of repressions against the Cuban people. Madagascar had foiled an attempt to assassinate President Andriy Rajolina and arrested six people, two of whom, according to diplomatic sources, were French nationals. And one day before the opening of the Olympic Games, Tokyo once again broke its record for daily coronavirus cases in the last six months. Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo from the headquarters of Quito in Ecuador. This is from the South. During a press conference, Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez rejected the new course of measures imposed by the United States and the disinformation campaigns issued by some international media. The President of the United States announced that sanctions against those responsible for what he calls repressions against the Cuban people will continue and that I categorically and absolutely reject. Here, there has been no act of repressions against the Cuban people, in the same way that there has not been a social explosion, as I have already denounced, despite the persistent mendacity of some well-established media. International press established, in particular in the United States and Spain, and a profusion of slander, manipulation, entanglement, lies, sheep, tricks on digital networks. And Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez said that the main obstacle to the connectivity of the Cuban people in telecommunication services is the illegal blockade imposed by the Washington government supported by media corporations. I declare that the main obstacle to the connectivity of Cuban citizens with the Internet, with digital networks and with other telecommunications services is the United States blockade of Cuba is the extreme manipulation of digital networks, the technological forms and the giants, the big imports that make and disprove and that unfortunately the United States government largely controls. And Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel also visited the power plant maintenance company in Havana's municipality of Marianao to recognize the workers of the company who restored the power plant service in the face of the recent power failures in the country. When we are reaffirming our revolutionary convictions, when we are defending the homeland, the revolution, at times when they have, as I said on another occasion, tried to kill us again and here we are alive, it is very important for one to feel supported, for all of us to feel supported, to feel as part of the workers' family that you represent today, and also because you have contributed in one of the fundamental tasks in which we are involved today, one of which has affected us the most during this time when we have shortages, when there is a lack of supplies due to all the things that you know, the blockade, the strengthening of the measures imposed by the Trump administration. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro emphasized that the country must reach 100% of its labor capacity and the productivity despite the implementation of coercive measures from the U.S. to strengthen the Venezuelan economy. And Venezuela has to reach 100% of the capacity of work, of the productive capacity, without excuses of any kind, in perilous attacks there will be today, tomorrow and always, and Venezuela must build its economic prosperity, its happiness and its socialism, counting on the imperialist attack and without using it as an excuse, we denounce in the world as criminal acts, as crimes against humanity, against Venezuela. We denounce them and we will denounce them. President Maduro reported that the Bolivarian government is ready to go to a table of dialogue in Mexico with all factions of the Venezuelan opposition. We are ready to go to Mexico. And Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, 
Dr. Héctor Rodríguez has informed all delegations of the opposition and of the government of Norway that we are ready to go to Mexico. We are ready to sit down on a realistic objective agenda, truly Venezuelan, to bring all the issues that need to be addressed, to reach partial agreements for peace, the sovereignty of Venezuela, so that all critical sanctions of Venezuela are lifted. Venezuelan Foreign Minister Jorge Arreaza rejected allegations by Colombian authorities regarding the alleged planning of an attempt on the Colombian president Ivan Duque's life in the country. Via his Twitter account, Foreign Minister Arreaza wrote, Once again, they use Venezuela to try to hide the tragedy of their country full of violence and armed groups whose economy and political class are based on drug trafficking, a repressive police massacres and daily assassinations of social leaders, exporters of mercenaries and assassins. Peru's National Jury of Elections said President-elect Pedro Castillo is set to receive this Thursday the presidential credentials for the 2021 to 2026 period. The Electoral Authority will hand over the credentials to Pedro Castillo with six days to go before the presidential inauguration. In this context, Castillo met with outgoing President Francisco Sagasti in private for two hours to begin the transition of the government. After the meeting, Castillo said the people need to know the situation of the state institutions. Castillo takes over the presidency after defeating Keiko Fujimori in the second round and dismantling together with the people a campaign promoted by Fujimori's supporters to hide the results of the June 6th elections. In Haiti, proceedings for the funeral of President Jovenel Moïse, assassinated in the early morning of July 7th, are underway. The First Lady, Martine Moïse, together with her children, received on Wednesday the condolences of several political personalities in the gardens of the Haitian National Pantheon Museum. During the ceremony, the widow said that the family will pay for the funeral ceremony to be held this Thursday in the city of Cap Haitian in the country's north. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador on Thursday urged Israel to cooperate in extraditing a former top investigator wanted in connection with the disappearance of the 43 students in 2014. Mexico wants Israel to arrest Tomás Cerón, who headed the criminal investigation agency over allegations of serious irregularities in the probe into one of the country's worst human rights tragedies. In January, Mexico said that Cerón was trying to obtain asylum in Israel Israel complicating extradition efforts. Ceron is accused of kidnapping, torturing suspects, manipulating evidence and embezzling around $50 million of public funds. I hope that the Israeli government will act with respect for human rights because we are requesting the extradition of this public official for acts of torture, among other things. The Chilean Congress will discuss this Thursday the new water code that promotes its rad, uh, rational and equitable use. The bill is currently submitted to the Senate for its general analysis. The regulation aims to guarantee food safety and human consumption of water by making it a resource for, for public use. The code will also grant more powers to the General Directorate of Water to control and also to promote the sustainable use of water resources in the country. The legislation which had been shelved in Parliament for several years due to economic pressures, will be discussed amidst the water crisis that affects Chile. We're taking our first break now. Join us again after this, but don't forget to follow me on my Twitter account at Ibravo Telesur for more updates. Stay with us.
Welcome back to From the South. More news now. Madagascar said on Thursday it had foiled an attempt to assassinate the president and arrested six people, two of which, according to diplomatic sources, were French nationals. In a statement, the prosecutor said that evidence showed these individuals devised a plan to eliminate and neutralize various Madagascar figures, including the head of state. The statement gave no details about the operation. Public security ministers said the police had information about this affair for months, adding that police officers acted swiftly to make Make simultaneous arrest in different locations. According to all the investigations we have made, the arrested persons are involved in the attempted assassination of the head of the state of Madagascar. The arrests followed all the norms. The arrests were not made by mercenaries but by the police. Six people were arrested, among them two Malagasy are binationals. There is also a foreigner and the others are Malagasy. Russia welcomed the agreement reached by Germany and the U.S. on operation of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Several political sectors consider the agreement between the United States and Russia a victory for Russia. The agreement between Berlin and Washington on the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline sets out a series of measures to support Ukraine and on European energy security. The pipeline project, rejected by Washington for years, aims to transport up to 55 billion cubic meters of natural gas per year from Russia to Germany via the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Thousands of government supporters gathered at Mescal Square in Addis Ababa on Thursday to celebrate the second filling of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Those joining the rally also made a show support for the Ethiopian military while denouncing rebels in the country's Tigray region. The dam has caused a controversy with Egypt and Sudan being in dispute with the building and filling of it. The issue is due to be discussed by the UN Security Council amid fears that conflict could be sparked by the project. On Thursday, the Syrian Arab Army air defenses repelled an Israeli aggression with missiles on Al Qusair area in Homs countryside. According to military authorities, the aggression took place at around 1 a.m. There were no casualties and only material damages were reported. The Syrian Foreign Ministry and the expatriates stated that the Israeli airstrikes take place within the framework of the systematic Israeli policy based on state terrorism and continuous support for terrorist groups. In China, at least 33 people were killed and eight more are missing due to floods in the central province of Hinan. The natural disaster affected an area of more than 3 million inhabitants, 375,000 of whom were evacuated. The direct economic impact is more than 180 million U.S. dollars. The Chinese government allocated a fund of 50 million U.S. dollars to begin the rescue and recovery efforts. And we stay in the Asian continent where millions of people have been affected by heavy floods and rains triggered by climate change. In India, heavy rainfall has left 30 people dead and the city of Mumbai paralyzed. In Pakistan, 14 citizens have lost their lives and another 20 are injured due to the storm. Meanwhile, Indonesia registers 20 dead and 30 missing. German Chancellor Angela Merkel stressed the need to speed up the fight against climate change as the death toll from the devastating floods in Germany have reached 177. It means that a lot has happened and we should not pretend that nothing has been done, but it has been measured. And it's true that not enough has been done to reach the aim of staying well under 2 degrees and as close to 1.5 degrees as possible. That is not just true of Germany, but of many countries across the world, which is why we need to increase the tempo. 
The Russian military joins the fight against raging wildfires in the country's Saka Yakutia region on Thursday. The Russian Air Force made 18 flights, dropping 36 tons of water in the blazes in the Gorny district. The vast Saka Yakutia region of Siberia has had a long spell of extremely hot and dry weather this summer, with temperatures reaching 39 degrees Celsius and setting records for several days. The fires have shrouded Yakutia cities, towns and villages in thick smoke, forcing authorities to briefly suspend flights at the regional capital's airport. The Defense Ministry deployed transport planes and helicopters to help those in flames. We're taking our last break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South, more news now. One day before the opening of the Olympic Games, Tokyo once again broke its record for daily coronavirus cases in the last six months. Thursday's 1,900 cases were the worst daily figure since the 2,000 reported on January 15th. On July 12th, the Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga declared a state of emergency for Tokyo and its metropolitan region, but the daily infection rate has continued to rise. The restrictions, which include include banning the sale of alcohol and reducing the opening hours of bars and restaurants will remain in place until August 22nd. The Olympic Games ends on August 8th. On Thursday, China described a World Health Organization proposal to audit Chinese labs as part of the further investigation into the pandemic's origins in China as arrogant and lacking in common sense. To be honest, when I first saw the WHO's plan for second stage investigation of COVID-19 origins, I was extremely surprised. This plan takes the hypothesis of China's violation of laboratory procedures causing virus leakage as one of the research priorities. From this point, I can feel that this respect for common sense and arrogance towards science revealed in this plan. Russian President Vladimir Putin expressed his frustration with the West's hesitation in approving Russian coronavirus vaccines during a cabinet meeting on Wednesday. Of course, it is hard to understand many of our colleagues who are continuing to differentiate between their own pandemic and someone else's, in particular slowing down the registration of our vaccines, which are unquestionably safe and effective. I hope we can cooperate in this work after all. Thousands of people demonstrated on Wednesday in Athens and other Greek cities against plans to make COVID-19 vaccinations mandatory for all health workers using police uh, tear gas and water cannon to disperse some protesters. On the eve of a parliamentary vote on a government decree, protesters held up posters saying no to mandatory vaccinations and freedom along with orthodox crosses and Greek flags. According to police authorities, over 3,000 people demonstrated demonstrated in Athens and more than 2,000 people demonstrated in the country's second largest city. Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel visited several municipalities in Havana to assess the work related to the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The head of state witnessed the operation of the vaccination center located in the neighborhood of Romerillo in the municipality of Playa. The, there, Díaz-Canel held talks with the residents of the community and received reports on the vaccination in the area. The president also visited the molecular, molecular immunology center where several national medicines used in the treatment protocols against COVID-19 are produced. In Cuba, over 135,000 inhabitants of Pinar del Rio municipality began receiving the Abdala vaccine this week as part of the clinical intervention against COVID-19 that will cover the entire province. 
Public health authorities explained that the municipality of Pinar del Rio reports the highest number of cases and the highest raised, uh, rate of transmission of the disease. They also stated that vaccination began in the health area of Hermanos Cruz, which was one of the highest infection rates within the municipality and a population of around 50,000 over 19 years old. And with that story, we've come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also be sure to follow us on our social media accounts. We are on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. See you next time.